All right, special guest Howard from uh, MaxSpec. Today we're talking about a whole bunch of nanotech medias. Right. Yes, there yeah. is one out there that will clear up the yellow out of your water mm -hmm. in a very surprising way. There is uh, one that will do the first half of the nitrogen cycle. One that does the ha last half, gets rid of the nitrate out of your tank yep. almost effortlessly. Yeah. Kind of tied into bio pellets in a unique way that you'll probably haven't seen before. Uh, there's also the uh, spheres, a new approach to frag mounts. And even if you're a GFO user, a different alternative, uh, this is not GFO, but does it, uh, I don't think, arguably better. Yeah. Uh, so we'll explore all those today. Okay. Starting with, I think maybe one that nobody even knows exists, and it's called the Nanotech Clear Cube. I think that one's this, hidden this back the here. One. Yeah, this one. Oh, it's the one on the top. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll let you open it up while I tell you. Uh, I'll the, open it up for you. Oh, go ahead. All right. Reduces yellowing compounds. This is my words now. Trailblazer product, different than anything else out there that I have seen. Right. right. So what is this thing going to do? Well, it, first of all, it's going to help break down the, you know, biopollutant in your tank, the yellowish tank that, you know, you get when you overfeed, you know, your tank, the fish poops, you know, and this is how going to break it down. So you get clear water in your tank. And this is not an absorbent. We're not going to go into that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's a, I saw, I just watched a video of this this morning. Yeah. Uh, you put this thing in with the yellow water and mm -hmm. the water is no longer yellow. So if you want to go see that video, go check out Max Specs yeah, YouTube page. Yeah, it's on the website. Yep. Uh, but I, I will tell you, like, uh, this one is interesting to me because I've never seen anybody use a brick like this to remove yellow water. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'll say here is, or you, you would say, is it's not a biomedia or ceramic. Right, it's not ceramic. Yeah, you would think that it looks a lot like that because we're going to show you a bunch of ceramic stuff today. It's not yeah. that. It's also not an absorbent, like no, it's you not know, absorbent. carbon. Yeah, it's yeah. not carbon. It's not going to rely on absorbing. So. We know that carbon is going to get saturated in a few days, maybe a week tops, you know, and this is not an absorbent. It works differently. Uh, it is tourmaline. It's a crystalline uh, silicate structure. Yeah. Right. Which is totally different than any of the things we just mentioned. Right. OK. Uh, and the way that it works is through electrical charges within the tourmaline structure uh, that changes the organic matter. Now, not the exact same thing, but somewhat similar to how ozone and oxidants work. Right. So it's actually going to change the, you know, use a, like you can go watch the, like the math of this on, a, yeah, on yeah. your webpage. There's a lot of science behind it, but uh, yeah, go check out our website. You know, if you are interested in knowing more about the science behind this product. So in a different video we did the other day, uh, like uh, uh, me and Jen did, we talked about Trailblazer products a little yes. bit. Like, yes. So you have products like this. This is, uh, you know, somebody approaches you and says, hey, this would work on this thing. You mm -hmm. test it and then uh, you get a good result. Somebody mm -hmm. else tests it. You get yep. a good result. Somebody else tests it. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, you've learned something new. New. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, it actually works. The thing is we, we tried it on our labs. You know, we have a lot of aquarium with really heavy bio load. You know, uh, we even try, you know, dumping skimmate in a tank and then turn it yellow and then we just rely only on the clear cube just after four to eight hours it clears up okay so uh i gotta be honest if it's yeah. coming from anybody else my like snake oil alarms <laughs> going off because i'm real hesitant to hear new technology in yes. some cases yes i am going to personally try this if sure. i have a positive result yeah. uh i think we're going to do like a brs investigates on it so Definitely. you can document uh, that result mm -hmm. uh but in the meantime uh that's what like the product reviews are for on the website so you know feel free to try it and share your own experience with okay. other people mm -hmm. that's part of being a trailblazer yeah uh, you know so uh a uh, again the, the nanotech clear cube this guy's going to get rid of yellow mm -hmm. pigments in a new unique way yeah right and also it doesn't it's not in the supplement which means you can use it for you know six months or even a year unlike you know carbon that you have to throw it away every you know week or so when it's got saturated so you can use this for you know pretty long period of time 
So if I was going to test it, that's what I would also be looking for yeah. is how long. Yep. Because carbon, it like tends to, you know, clear all the water up really rapidly. Yeah. And then, you know, it gets dirty and then it gets really rapidly again. Yeah. So if I could put something in the sump that would allow it to just, you know, generally stay fairly clear mm -hmm. all the time, way better option. Yeah. So. And you're also not risking stripping your water with all the nutrient with carbon? Oh, carbon's gonna take out your amino acids, yeah. oils, and all those kinds of things too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, but also, like in a normal world, I, I want clear water. I don't yeah. want it to be all yellow and gross. yeah, especially for corals, you know. Yeah, but uh, so it's a trade-off. But Oof. this is a different type of trade-off. So I would take Tail Trailblazer product. Check it out. All right. All right. So the next one ha we have on here, and this is a two-part. So. The one I really want to tell you, we're going to get to in a second here, which is this black nanotech or mm -hmm. anaerobic block. Stick around for this one because it, it you haven't seen it this way yeah. before. Uh, uh, but the first one is actually these nanotech bio bricks. And, now you've seen these things, types of things before, right. you know, uh, other brands you know, make ceramic bricks, it's not mm -hmm. uncommon. These ones are different though. Okay, so uh, this one here, I'll let you hold it. Yep. Okay, so these are your like biomedia bricks, right? What makes them different than something else? Yes, you can super hear duper hard, right? Uh, I will. I got some notes here, but uh, you're gonna use it for uh, half of the nitrogen cycle. You know, meaning yeah. like transferring ammonia and nitrite, ending up at nitrate. Nitrate, yes. Okay. Uh, I would say good for any tank, but great for tanks that are light on biomedia. Yeah. Meaning no sand, no sand. Uh, or really minimalist aquascape. Right. So you want to have some sort of a media to grow your bacteria because you don't have sand or maybe you only have a little bit of live rocks, you know. So this will help a lot, you know, just to make sure you have that uh, sufficient amount of uh, bacteria uh, colonies in your tank to, you know, neutrify your bio uh, pollutions. So I would say that I used to use media like this and then I kind of stopped because it either a like the chemically hardened stuff would, mm -hmm. would kind of turn to mush after years yeah. and then the kiln hardened stuff that's like, you know, like uh, the way that those things are many of the other ones are work is it's like a like a ceramic slurry. Yeah. And then they add, you know, things to add it to have a gas and it like leavens, you mm. know, it's it's like a loaf of bread almost. You can even see it. Like yeah, it's kind of got this it. round element on one yeah, side of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what happens is it makes this big pore structure. It's kind of irregular. The water flows through well, but like it's so brittle. Yeah, it, you know, it, it crumbles. It, it crumbles. Yeah. yeah. So I just stopped using it because I didn't like yeah. it. I don't want to clean up the mass. You know, the reason why we have this is that we don't want to use sand uh, in the sump, right? We want to be able to maintain that, like take it out, you know, every six months, you don't want to take out all of them at once. Otherwise, it's going to, you know, disrupt that, you know, cycle, the balance in the mm -hmm. bacteria. But you want to take out maybe half of them and clean out, you know, the biofilm, you know, and then put it back in. So you can do that with the bio blocks, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to crumble. You're going to stay put like that for years. If you ever use the media, you'll touch it and immediately know the difference. Yeah. Like it, and the this, weight too. Feels like a brick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, it's much harder, heavier than ceramic media. Mm -hmm. And so you'll look at it. If you look really close at it, what it is is micro beads of ceramic. Mm -hmm. So it's not the leavened stuff. So uh, yeah. you micro beads of ceramic that's shaped and then kiln fired. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, burn off all of the excess stuff. Right. You know, that, doing that. So if you can look at it, if you look real close and have good eyes and mine are going, it is little teeny little beads right. of ceramic. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you're saying because that has more surface area? Yeah, it's got a lot more surface area than any other me biomedia in the market. So you can use, mm, you know, a few of them and achieve the same sort of results that you rather use. For example, back in the days, we use a lot of plastic bio balls, right? Mm -hmm. You need to use, a, you know, the, the sump full of those bio balls to get the same result of just two blocks. So it will save you a lot of room so you can put your reactors in there, whatever you want to put in sump. There you go. Uh, also, no aluminum. No aluminum. That's one of yep. the concerns that people have with these types of medias. Yeah, it's just ceramic. Uh, we sent it to ICB test. It's 100% rip safe. Uh, yeah. It says right here uh, on the front, yep. ICP MS testing. So yep. MS is like a step beyond the typical aquarium, right. uh, you know, testing. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so there's this media, but now here, what about the uh, nitrate element of it? Like, right. Because this stuff kind of like stops there. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the cool part. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this one, I've seen it on the website, man. Mm -hmm. I never really dug into it. And so today was kind of exciting for me. Okay. Uh, these are like little black ones, mm -hmm. but they have a different, they have a little rubber seal around the edge yeah, of it. Yeah, this is the cool. Okay. Uh, another difference here is it's got this little like square cutout yeah. in, in the middle and it comes with this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we call that the catalyst. It's actually a PHA material, uh, similar material that we will use in bowel pellets. So it's actually uh, food for the anaerobic bacteria. So like uh, if you are familiar with anaerobic, like one of the debates here, if I could ever get this open, uh, is like, all right, I'll just tear it. Yeah. Uh, if you can uh, ever get one of these, <laughs> one of the debates here is that like you need a carbon source for anaerobic bacteria to process nitrate into nitrogen gas. Right. Which is kind of like the holy grail. Like we're just like, if I can put food in, it's processed into ammonia, it's processed into nitrite, mm -hmm. and then something would process it into nitrogen gas, mm -hmm. and then it bubbles out into the atmosphere. Right. Yeah, so basically it, com it completes the nitrogen cycle. So it basically all your food and the fish poop, you know, all the bio waste is going to be turned into nitrite with the biomedia. And this is going to be completing the cycle by denitrification. So it breaks down the nitrate back into nitrogen gas and it can escape into the air. So the way that this works is you put this little PHA cartridge here and we'll talk about what PHA, PHA is in just a second, but you put the little PHA in there and then you sandwich you close that. it up, sandwich it up in there, mm -hmm. you know, set it in your sump. Uh, and now it has a carbon source mm -hmm. and an anaerobic area. And just for wondering, like, I don't need to create a humid, uh, like a, a absolute seal, you yeah, know, yeah. to be able to do that. Like, right. I just need to like not be pounding water through. It, right. right. Yeah. The reason why we have this, you know, silicone uh, coat, you know, around the blocks is because the the bio block is so porous, right? Mm -hmm. Water can go through it easily. So we need to have something to block the water from, you know, going through it. Otherwise, it's going to destroy the anoxic area in between the blocks, right? So what we do is end up having this kind of uh, 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 rubber, not rubber, but silicone, you know, sleeve that we can put around the block. And then if you put it like that in a sump, then water is only going to go through here, but then you remain anoxic inside where the anaerobic bacteria is going to thrive and, this, you know, it's going to break down the nitrate into nitrogen gas. Okay, so I will call this a trailblazer product too. Yes. Because uh, I haven't actually used anything specifically like this where mm -hmm. we found a tool to be able to put the organic carbon in there that we all know the bacteria needs to achieve this mm -hmm. and then provide a high surface area area for these things to live on. Right. Uh, and put in something and like the way you're describing it earlier, it's kind of like this is like a almost like a mobile DSP. Like yeah, a deep yeah, sand yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. And because of the you know huge amount of surface area in this block, right? You don't really need like six, five, six inches of sand to achieve what this is like. What two inches? Mm -hmm. uh, because of the massive surface area, as long as you have that anoxic area in between, they're gonna grow, and you have the food too. So it's like you know, nice place. You have the food. You have the nice condo. You know, the bacteria is gonna thrive inside. I've I've heard people tested like. You can find a, an anoxic zone like a couple of millimeters in there. Right. There's enough surface right, area. Right, it, right. All the bacteria just strips the oxygen off yeah. by the time it doesn't go very far. Yes. And people have actually done these things in like just a like a tube. You know, just yeah. pump water through a long enough tube, and then in the tube, the bacteria strips it off. Right. Yep. Right. We are using similar you know techniques here. No organic uh, uh, carbon in that case, but mm -hmm. uh, all right. So. This in this case here, uh, the, there's a reason why this is black. Yeah. Well, what is it instead well, of the white color? OK, first of all, we want to differentiate between the regular blocks and this one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by looking at the color and we also have done some research, you know, in some uh, particular research saying suggesting that, you know, in the darker in front one and outbreak bacteria is going to thrive better. So uh, we want to have this special coating 
to stimulate the growth of anaerobic bacteria inside that anoxic area. Uh, you said to me it was 50% more effective at yeah. nitrate than the white version. Yes, of course, because it's going to break it, break it out. All right. Uh, and so the uh, PHA. So yes. what? So this is this this plastic here that if you just saw it, you just call it plastic. But yeah. uh, you know what is it? Well, it is plastic. What we call the biodegradable plastic. If you look around, there's a lot of you know plastic bags or disposable uh, 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 you know, forks and knives that you use during your meals. Those are basically made of biodegradable, uh, biodegradable plastic and PHA is one of them. So my uh, research a long time ago uh, with uh, PHA was basically bacteria make this type of plastic, yeah. right? Uh, what they do is when they have uh, adequate levels of nitrate and phosphate, but an abundance of organic carbon, mm -hmm. they'll actually create this stuff, the bacteria, in order to survive times when organic carbon isn't available. Deficient, yeah. Right? Our tanks, believe it or not, are actually deficient in organic carbon almost always, and why that like nitrate uh, yeah. uh, uh, cycle doesn't happen on its own. Yep. So this is actually bacteria made by bacteria for when organic carbon is scarce. Mm -hmm. In our tanks, it is often scarce. So we're going to put this in there for the bacteria to do the exact thing that it was designed over to millennia to do. Yeah, this right? is basically just bacteria food, you know. When they have an abundance of food, they can, uh, you know, rapidly, you know, populate that area. So for me, like this is, but for the you don't know the pH is all like the most popular bio pellet media. Yeah. Right. So this is basically just a sheet of bio pellets. I would say so, but it's a hundred percent pure pHA, which is kind of difficult to actually find nowadays. There you go. So that's put inside this little brick. Uh, this is something that also. I'm going to throw into a tank here. Yep. I'm find one that has a uh, high nitrates, throw it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I find out. And if we have positive results, sure. uh, we are going to probably do an investigates on this because it'd be pretty easy to do. Yeah. Uh, and then for you guys as well, I'm just going to keep saying it. Like we test it, we test it again. We get other people to test it, yep. give you reviews, use the product reviews for this very specific purpose to mm -hmm. share your experience using it. Uh, if it's positive, then other people learn and yeah. we progress and we do new things in this hobby. Okay. Uh, this is uh, a very new approach to this that right. most people have not done before. Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, oh, how often do you change out these little bricks? By well, the way? we recommend people to change it out about every three months. Okay. And if you have a lot, you might actually consume the whole thing before yeah. that. So. Yeah. It depends on your bio load. If you have a fish only tank, you know, especially if you have a fish only tank with like what, half a dozen, maybe a couple dozen fishes. And, yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna have a really heavy bow load. So, uh, like, also, like, they suggest lifting it up, uh, like, once a month. Let's yeah, yeah. Gas oh, you'll up. be surprised. You know, when you lift it up, you see the bubbles escaping. You know, bloop, 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 bloop. You can see that, mm -hmm. and that's why we have so many holes in the, uh, uh, in the catalyst because we want, we don't want the air to trap underneath it, so you can actually have ways to escape. Mm -hmm. So, so does it disrupt the, you know, the anaerobic bacteria that's living in there when you mm -hmm. open it up? Well, do it quickly. You don't want to like, ooh, ooh. you just like a slightly lift it open. You can see the bubble escape and then just close off. It, it's it's not going to kill off the problem. Yeah. Okay. I interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then the next one here is actually those balls, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. So uh, uh, we skipped over them, but basically yeah. the balls are very similar to this, but in a different form. Yeah. So they're called uh, actually biospheres. nanotech biospheres, right? The same like, material, but in a different shape. You know, some people like to use the blocks. Some people like to use the uh, sheet as a spheres. Mm -hmm. So it's just depending on your preference. You know, this type of spheres, like obviously can go into like a, where you would do bio balls or something, but yeah. the spheres are also kind of like cool to put into like your baffles of your sump where mm -hmm. water is flowing through there. Right. Uh, but like you got these holes and it goes in and around it. And because they're like really hard, you don't have to worry about like, if you need to clean that area no. out, you can take these things out, yes. you know, or then clean it out pretty easy without, you know, having to crumble in your hands. No, it's not going to crumble. It's solid, rock solid, you know. 
<laughs> you that? Yep. And, you know, we... Uh, actually, I don't want to crack your... Cup. I know, I thought I was going to break some of it earlier. Uh, okay, right. so in these balls, they're harder to stand up to water flow better. So, mm -hmm. like, if you're using, like, a trickle filter or something like Absolutely, that... Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you're not going to, like, you know, erode it you no. know, over time. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's also because... Uh, well, one of the ways you can tell it's harder is because of this thing right there. Yeah. You know? Uh, if you try to drill a hole through the center of a leavened product, it would probably just, just crumbles. Yeah. yeah. And one thing is, I mean, for people with smaller tanks, you know, you can just use maybe a couple of the spears, right? Like nano tanks or pickle tanks, you can use it. It will work a lot better than any of the uh, other material or media that, that comes along with the, 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 the nano tank. Mm, yeah. Uh, another one, if you're using like in, instead of a bio ball or a similar thing, is one of the nice things about this is it stays wet. Yes. Uh, like so, if you were gonna do like a water change in a, like a bio ball system, uh, you can't let those bio balls dry no. out or the yeah. whole filter's gone. Yeah. Yeah. They actually stay moist for at least a lot longer than what you would see on the typical plastic you know bow ball well i can tell you that one of those bricks over there we got wet like a few hours ago yeah i picked it up it's still wet it's still wet yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh okay and it's heavier you can feel this whole yes. water in it yeah. yeah uh okay uh it doesn't crumble also again no aluminum no. little tag on there no. it says icp I'm icp testing. tested okay uh you know similar to this one which is kind of interesting mm, let me take uh, it out. We got two more to go through here. Is yep. this guy and, and that these guy. nanotech like uh, bio plugs? The, the frac plugs. Okay, this one's interesting because you share some data on your website. Yeah. Uh, when I I seen this before, and the yep. first time I saw it again, I was like, I don't know if mm -hmm. I really believed that outcome. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, you guys are gonna have to share your experiences sure. the only way. Uh, but you're saying basically that the corals. The coral frags will grow faster mm -hmm. using these instead of a normal ceramic media. Like, right. You know, if you use a normal ceramic frag plug, you know, they're a little cheaper, mm -hmm. but these will grow coral faster. Right. All right. Well, we'll discuss it. Yeah. Sna make snake oil alarms going off a little <laughs> bit. Uh, but also, man, I'm, I'm wrong all the time. You know, you learn something new and you got to apply it. So, all right. How does it do it? Well, basically, this is a biomedia too. If you compare it to regular ceramic plugs, they are basically solid ceramic. There's no uh, pore structure inside, so you won't have anything growing inside, only on the surface, right? But this is just like any of our other biomedia. It's pore structure, so you can have water going through it, underneath it. So when you have uh, the, the frags starting to encrust onto the plug, they are still getting water from underneath the plug that you would otherwise not get from regular solid ceramic plug, right? So not only they're getting water, they're getting, getting oxygenated or water underneath the plug, but also bacteria. This is a biometer. So there will be bacteria growing inside. So you know, uh, you know, SPS especially, right? They feed on bacteria too. So technically speaking, they can grab some of the bacteria coming in and out of the plug, which you don't get with a regular solid, you know, uh, ceramic plug and we did test it a lot we spent like a year of uh, testing out different you know plugs and the bio plug and we saw a significant uh, improved growth rate on the bio plug okay so this is ripe for a brstv investigates too because all i gotta do is use these and a couple other ones mm -hmm. uh, and make some coral clippings sure. and throw the frags and see what happens yeah right? it's not a real difficult thing to do uh this much I, I will say mm -hmm. is, I mean, I would have never thought to pay a little bit extra. And by a little bit, I'll tell you how much it is in a second. Uh, I, cause it's just a frag plug, you know? It's a frag plug. But if I look at your website and see the side by sides and how the corals are growing faster on here, well, you know, a typical frag plug costs like uh, uh, 50 cents or so. Yeah. And this one, I think, uh, or no, they cost about a quarter. And these ones cost about 40 to 50 cents. Yeah. Right. So for 25 cents, it will cost me extra to use this one over a different one. And if I get almost any additional growth, it was probably worth the 25 cents. Yes. Uh, yeah. that, that's the pitch. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if it's a lot more like, holy cow, we've we've 
really changed. And this is the reason why I'm starting to be open-minded about it though, is because I know for sure that some corals will calcify faster on some surfaces than others. Right. I don't know which surface necessarily is mm -hmm. the best surface and which ones are always the worst. But like you can even see it with coralline algae. Yeah. You know, coralline yeah, yeah, algae, yeah. calcifying organism mm -hmm. will grow on some things, does not grow very well on others. Right. You yeah. Know? As you know what? It, you see it even in dry rock. Right? right. Yes. So dry rock, like the, it takes a while for the, uh, you know, calcareous algae to want to mm -hmm. populate the rock. But meanwhile, you know, it's populating other things in the tank that are, you know, presumably growing like a biofilm faster. Right. You know? Yes. Uh, so uh, in the end, let's find out. Let's uh, find out. Uh, and like this is again, I keep making this I, I request here, actually, because if you're going to be a trailblazer. These are all like really inexpensive, easy things yeah. to trailblaze. Yeah. Make sure you leave the review if it's positive, because it's it's when we all share our opinions on, you know, good and bad. Yeah. Uh, whether or not these things work out is how we find progress. Right. And we are open to all kind of, uh, you know, criticism, you know, ideally constructive ones. Right. But uh, that's how we can improve our product. Right. If some, something works or something doesn't work, how can we improve on that, right? So, yeah, leave us some comments on, on, on this product, you know, and we'll work on it. All right. Maybe a brand new way to do frag plugs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then this one, if you're a GFA OO oh. user, meaning you're, you know, got phosphate problems and you're using yep. uh, a GFO to suck it out, uh, this is an alternative to that. It is not GFO, even though if you open it up at a glance, it might kind of look like it. It's actually a resin yes. inside. Uh, we'll talk about how it's used, but mm -hmm. what's the number one benefit that you would get from using a resin over an GFO. iron oxide? Well, uh, GFO, the first thing you have to rinse it because otherwise it's going to change water into like tea like color right so you have to rinse it but you have to understand that you have phosphate in your tap water so the, by the time you rinse finish rinsing your gfo you're gonna be you know using up like half of that capacity inside the gfo before you can even put it in your tank you know and on top of that you need to use a reactor to use gfo because otherwise over like a week's of time they all get stuck together and you're not getting that, you know, uh, reaction between the water and the GFO. So, and, you know, last but not least, you're not getting that black powder when you use GFO because GFO is actually iron rust, right? And you have some tiny little black, you know, iron oxide that can go into a main tank. Uh, I used to use GFO, right? And I often see that black dot on my sand that I couldn't get rid of. So, you know, when we use the recent uh, you don't have to rinse it. You just put it in a mesh bag, just dump it in. So you're not wasting uh, uh, the capacity of the resin by rinsing them. You're not getting that color. You're not getting that black powder going into the main tank. So these are the advantages of using a resin over GFO. All right, so uh, mainly hit all the things here, man. One, <laughs> but one of what we missed was yeah. it's slower than GFO. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you know when we use GFO, the number one thing we noticed that it will strip the water of all your phosphate really rapidly, like maybe in a day's time, maybe in a couple of hours time. You know, when you have a system with high phosphate and you strip that off, you know, over a period of, you know, eight to 10 hours, you're not gonna stress your coral really bad. You know, I've seen corals that will go into, you know, LTN because, you know, the parameter changes overnight. So what our reason does differently, it will uptake phosphate over a period of, you know, five days to a week. So instead of like, you know, dropping down immediately from let's say one PPM to 0.1 PPM, it would do that over days. So it gave time for a coral to get custom to that drop in phosphate without stressing them out. So if you're not catching this, like mm -hmm. most of this stuff here is actually kind of like newer, newer or newish to the hobby, different approaches to this stuff. Uh, I've seen resin before mm -hmm. that uh, is just like GFO impregnated. Yeah, you know, which, this is not. And then that's kind of nice because it like removes the dust and stuff, yeah. but it's way, way, way more expensive. Yes. Uh, and it has the same thing. It just strips it all out at once yeah. really, really rapidly. This, I mean, I can smell it. It smells like a cation resin. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like this is an ionically charged resin. It's it's not like, it does, it does not look anything like the 
like impregnated resins that yeah. I've seen. Uh, so a totally different approach to it. Uh, no dusty finds, mm -hmm. slower than the GFO, gives you time. And so the slower to me means like, I'm gonna try it again. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I might try this on my own tank because uh, we start feeding a lot because I got all these anthias in there now yeah. that are, like, <laughs> need to be fed constantly. Yep. Uh, and if I use this, I'm kind of curious, can I put it in there mm -hmm. and then basically let it get down to where I want it and then just pull it out? Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, so I'm kind of curious. I want to try yeah. it out. Uh, I know my tank is pretty big, so I'm curious. You could, you could have, you probably have to use quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I probably have to use a lot more. But, uh, we'll see how much I got to yeah. use. Uh, all right. So the reactor thing, though, I stopped using GFO a while ago because I don't like tuning the yeah, reactor. Yeah. I don't yeah. like trying to keep it tumbling. Mm -hmm. I started mixing it with carbon, which works just fine. You know, it's like 50% carbon, 50% GFO. GFO. Yeah. Mix it, yeah, and then yeah. it doesn't turn that rust block most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm like using carbon all the time too. And I don't always want to use like carbon 24 seven. I yeah. just want to use that as a tool as needed. Yeah. So uh, this is actually kind of an interesting, uh, different approach for me. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so that is all of the uh, MaxSpec uh, biotech medias, uh, different approaches, trying to up the game on like, I think every single one of these things like trying to do it a little bit better than everybody else does. Yeah, hopefully that, you know, I hope this is gonna benefit from using our tools. All right, see you in the next one.